Hi scholars, today we're going to continue talking about exponential growth and uh, we're going to start with our simple interest model and sort of complicate it in two different ways. So our initial interest model, right, was uh, you had your initial amount and we're going to um, add, let's say we're, we're growing, let's say we're talking about exponential growth, we're going to add um, a certain rate every year or every time period for a certain number of years, certain number of time periods. And so this was our sort of our starting place, right? Now, another way that we could add, um, and so let's actually do a quick example of that. So, for example, I have $100. Uh, I'm going to get, let's say, 24% interest. So, I'm going to put 0 0.24, okay? And let's say over seven years. Um, seven years, okay. So, another way that I could get this 24% interest, so this right here represents our 24% interest. Another way that I could do that, if I didn't want to say wait until the end of every year and then give that 24%, get that 24%, I could say, well, what happens if I split that uh, up instead of once a year to being once a month? Well, if I got 24% over the whole year, right, but I got it every month, well, it's 12 months, so my 24% divided by 12 months, um, would say would mean that every month I would get 2%, right? Okay, so that's one thing. And then we want to ask, well, in seven years, how many months are there, right? How many times would, if I went, did this direction, would I have to compound this interest, right? And the answer is there are 7 times 12 months. There's 84 months. And so we can actually rewrite um, this, uh, the, this uh, simple compound interest formula using this new idea of compounding in successively smaller intervals. So instead of year every year, we'll do every month. We can write that as uh, 1 plus, well, 2%. I could write it as 0 0.02, but I'm going to instead write it as 0 0.24, okay? And we're going to do that number divided by 12, because that's essentially what we did here, right? We did 0 0.24 divided by 12. And we said that we're going to do, we're, we'd have to do this 7 times 12, 84 times. So I could write 84 here, but instead I'm, I'm just going to write actually 7 times 12, okay? So this is how you would calculate. 2% interest every month, which ca is 24% interest every year over seven years, okay? And we can actually, from now that we know that this is what this looks like, we can go in the, in the reverse direction and write a model for this. So the model for compounding in different intervals, right, would be A, 1 plus, there's still a 1 plus R to the T, right? That's not changing. However, we're just adding a new value, okay? And that n is representing, right, the number of times we compound, okay? So we compound per, let's say, year, okay? Okay, so we have our first model, our simple interest model. Now we can compound the a an annual interest of 24%, right, for example, in successively smaller amounts. and we can imagine, instead of doing it every month, we could imagine what happens if we would do it every day. What would happen if we did it every hour? What would happen if we did it every minute, every second? What would happen if we compounded this $100, right, continuously, right? So it didn't even have time to, it grew, and then we compounded it, it grew, we compounded it shorter and shorter and shorter intervals. And what that's really asking is, it's really asking what ha would happen to this value right here here, we'll put a sort of a box around it. What would happen to this value right here as this n gets larger and larger and larger and larger, okay? And we saw in class that that value actually approximates this uh, Euler's number, right? And this is, the, this is a natural growth factor, okay? This is E. We can find it in our calculator. It's about 2.718. It's an irrational number. It's a very special number. Okay, and so our third uh, uh, growth formula for continuous interest, we still have our principal amount. The growth factor now is E, and we're going to raise it to the R T power. Okay, so this is a third model. So we have these three models. Let's play around with them. Okay, so 
Drew had $500 to invest and is trying to decide between four banks that each offer a different rate of return. For each bank, write a formula for the total amount of money that Drew will have T years after she invests her money. So we're not being asked to calculate, but just to do a formula. So let's say that her bank grows at an annual rate of 12% per year. Okay, so that's that's sort of the simplest uh, way we can, the simplest model we can use. It means that after one year, they say, okay, boom, here's your 12%. After another year, December 31st, they say, boom, here's your 12%. So we can model that with your initial amount. 12% it, it, it increase is 1 plus 0 0.12. And we want this to be calculated t years after. So all that to the t power, right? And I could rewrite that just more simply as 500, 1.12 to the t power, OK? So this is, in fact, how we would model this situation. OK. The other bank is saying that the money grows at an annual rate of 12% per year compounded quarterly okay so this is important quarterly means four times per year okay so again we can start to write our model okay so we have our model 500 one oops 500 one plus we have our 0 0.112 all raised to the t power, right? Only this time we're compounding it four times a year, which means that instead of 12% uh, interest, right? We're gonna have every time we're compounding it, 3%, right? 12% divided by four. And instead of being compounded once every year, where every year counts once, we want every year to count four times, okay? So let's just clean that up. We can say that this formula, or this um, model would look something like 1 plus, or we don't even need the plus, we can just do 12 divided by 4, so that'll be 1.03 to the 4t power, okay? So again, there are two places where if we're compounding at a different rate, we need to, f we need to sort of compensate for that into our formula, okay? The third bank grows at a continuous annual rate of 12% per year, and so you're tipped off. When you see that word continuous, we are using the model AE to the RT power, okay? So again, we start with our 500. E, right, this is an actual number. It's a button on your calculator. It's an irrational number. And we're going to raise it to, we know we're going to raise it to the uh, T power. So let's put that in there. We'll keep it in blue so we, so we can sort of track things. And now um, we might be uh, uh, thinking that we want to write in, in this number right here, 1.12, right? Because it's growing 12%. And I know we know how to, with 12% increase means I start with one and I add 0.12, right? So in this formula, that's actually incorrect. That one plus is already taken into account with the uh, natural base of E, okay? It's already built into this number E here. So in fact, we're gonna, gonna model this as just 0 0.12 times T, okay? And this right here is our model. And let's just take a look at our last bank. Our last bank says grows by $12 per year. Well, that's a linear model. I start with 500 every year, I get $12, right? That's a, that's a model that has a slope and a y-intercept, okay? So the question is, which one should she use to invest her money? Which one will ha have her money grow faster, right? And um, the answer is that continuous growth grows faster. And so here's just um, sort of like an a example of that. We start with $1,000, and we want to ask, um, the, the bottom line is it's compounded yearly, right? So this one represents every year, right? You get a bump. Every year, you get a bump. And then we can see quarterly. Every three months, you get a bump. Every three months, you get a bump. Monthly, every one month, you get a bump. And continuously means like every instant you're compounding. And you can see at the end, after 10 years, that uh, with the, year, the yearly model, um, when you're getting compounded once a year, you're sort of right up to here, right? Maybe a little over $6,000. In the uh, uh, quarterly model, you're over here, about 7000 the monthly model is getting pretty good, right? A little more than 7,000, but, right? It's a little hard to see here, but in fact, the, the blue line, the continuous growth model, 
right here, this is our E value, right? That one is going to actually grow faster. And when you go out, instead of 10 years, if you went out 100 years, the differences between this one, this one, this one, and this one would get even larger. They would grow, okay?